So then folks, have we got a special little treat for you today? We've got a, a bit of a talking point, something that is a little bit relevant at the, mid, at the minute. And I think it could have a place in match fishing this could. So it's worth having a bit of a chat about and just seeing if we can find a use for it. And it is this. We've been able to miss a bit of a mess around with this. It's the magic twig. So you might have seen on social media recently, a lot of carp anglers, they're talking about the magic twig. It's from OMC Angling, which is Ali Hamidi's new company. I think they've been going, what, a year now? Quite a, uh, quite a new company. And this little gizmo is designed to hook the fish for you. So a fish picks up the bait, feels the weight of the feeder, moves the weight of the feeder or the lead, and a spring mechanism fires, pulls the, fish, pulls the hook into the fish. Has it got a use in match fishing though? That's what we want to talk about today. And you know, maybe is it ethical as well? Because it seems to make fishing a little bit easier for you. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should. I think that's the first thing we should touch on, Rob. Because obviously, um, unless you've been living under a bridge, it's a hot topic in the general fishing world. Um, I think uh, I was just saying to you off camera that um, a couple of the media publications asked me a similar type of question. Is it like, well, are we non-striking? Are we not striking anymore in fishing? Well, I mean, for me, I think it's really important that we sort of clear that up and then I want to talk about it in match fishing. So just because this is our opinion and I appreciate... Your opinion. Sorry, that's true. Well, no, this <laughs> is our opinion, what yeah. we're going to say together. So just pass it that to me yeah. for a just second. Just remember, folks, this one here, we've been messing around with it because it actually comes with two arms on it. Mm. Um, and that's been causing a bit of a uh, mm. kerfuffle because... People feel that once the mechanism mechanism has been mm. sort of like triggered, triggered, mm. those arms could potentially catch any weed yeah. and become maybe something that could snag up and potentially harm mm. the fish. Mm. I'm not so sure about that. I've not seen that in use. We've just messed around and took one of the arms off just to make it almost trigger in a, a slightly lighter fashion, just to have a mess around. So it does come with two arms just for yeah. So 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 really, I, I just want to touch on the fact that. I am all for, Rob, innovation in angling, mm. right? Innovation in angling has brought us some amazing things. Flat method feeder, I'm just going to use in, in our fishing. Hang on, stole um, it back 30 or 40 years. A yeah, feeder. Yeah, a feeder. A feeder. Yeah, absolutely, a feeder, exactly, yeah. a feeder. Rods and reels. Mm. People just used to fish with a whip. Yeah, I know. You've got you a know, reel so you can cast and wind going, going in. Yeah. You can keep it going as far as you can. So. As far as I'm concerned, hats off for innovation in angling. That's the first thing I want to touch on. Anyone who tries to hinder that, I think you're living in the dark ages. If you want to go and do traditional angling with a, a centre pin or something, that's great. There should be a place for everything. This is an advancement in angling, so fair play to them. Is this a, is this a device that is currently non-striking? Well, hang on a minute. When your rod goes round, and we've said this before, if you're a carp angler and you've got four ounces plus of lead, on your bait and a fish picks up your very big hook mm. and this very big hook is into the fish and it feels the resistance of the lead, the fish swims off, the fish has hooked itself. Every single carp has hooked itself, in my opinion, mm. right? As they pick up the lead, against that weight of the lead and then of course, nobody's fishing or very few carp anglers fish with a slack line, the line is tight to lead to rod and obviously that whole pickup causes your bite alarm to go beep, or yeah. drop back. So there is no change in that. Don't get confused that fishing has suddenly become I think with that, non that heavy lead, you? And, uh, that heavy lead, mm. you know, whether you're using slack line, tight line, doesn't really matter because some carp anglers do use slack lines. A lot of them do. Um, or they, or like they use something to weight the line yeah, down weight, though, uh, still. Uh, yeah, you know, back lead or something like that. But what I, have seen, or what I have seen is a lot of the time when an angler might get a double take, mm. for instance, he plays one fish in, and the other one, he, he's still tearing off. He maybe turns his alarm off because he doesn't want the constant beeping. He plays one fishing, nets the fish. If you love your fishing and you love your fishing videos and you want to get better at fishing, there are two places where you can watch all the detailed fishing videos we produce. First of all, the website, www.anglingedge.co.uk. Masses of detail in these videos you get when you sign up all of the new videos and all of the old videos. There's a method, a tactic, a venue for everybody there. Plus, you now get all of that content on YouTube. You can join, click that button just there, join our membership. There you get all the same content, 
all those new videos, all those old videos, you'll learn loads because along the journey, we've learned loads too. Always when they pick up that extra rod, that second rod, the fish is on. The fish is still on. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not really getting rid of that four ounce lead that easy. No, absolutely. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is if a carp picks up a bait and seven times out of 10 it hooks itself, maybe eight or nine times out of 10 it hooks itself with this device. I don't know, I haven't mm. used it. The, based on the, the marketing that I've seen, that's the, that's the yeah. whole idea. You're gonna get a higher percentage of pickup. So it's no different to me and you fishing with a method feeder, Rob. When mm. I fish with a method feeder, we chuck it out, we set our tip, generally a little bit slack, and we wait for this, don't we? Whee! Yeah, we're not we're looking for a little bite. We're not looking bite. for little it's, quivers. It's gone. The fish has hooked itself. The fish bolts against the method feeder. When you're fishing shallow with the jigger float, the fish hooks itself and your pole goes down. You use the elastic in the pole to stop it getting broken. Lee, I was fishing shallow yesterday with a beautiful mm. little float and you look at it and you think, that's a lovely way of fishing. Mm. The distance between my pole tip and float was literally an yeah. inch and a half, two inch, because I want them to hook themselves against the pole tip. I don't want to strike. Exactly, hooking themselves. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a way of trying to convert a slightly more uh, hookups. As for the ethics in terms of catching the weed, I can't speak about it at all. No, I, 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 I've seen. I've not fish, used it, Lee. I've not used I've it. I've seen fish trailing four ounce, six ounce leads, Rob, mm. because people don't always use a leg clip. Um, I think that a carp fishing rig in general is very bulky, and generally speaking, it's gonna it's gonna get a little bit of weed. I would be amazed myself if something got caught behind that to stop it. But I mean, obviously, there's always a chance. I think that's for the fisheries and the company to sort out themselves. Mm. So just in terms of the but what it is, I want to say, well done. Mm. Well done for coming up with something that's, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a good bit of I think, angling I think talking about the the things that we don't know about, i.e. catching up in yeah, I don't weed know about or it. nets. Yeah. You know, I, we've not used it. I don't know about that. But actually, a use for getting more fish in the net. Yeah. Fair can play. we can we use that in match yeah, fishing? Yeah, so let's talk think? about that in match fishing. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Rob, I do. So let's let's wind it back a little bit. So we have played around with elastic in our rigs, mm. haven't we? Yeah, in we our have, feeder yeah, rigs. Yeah. So when you're feeder fishing, you have your tip bent round. Now we both have realised that if you have your tip bent really tight, you miss more bites, mm. don't you? Yeah. Right. So effectively, they can bounce themselves off against the they tip, can't they? Bounce them. So yeah. as the fish picks it up, if it, because we're fishing in match fishing in, in for generally smaller fish, aren't we? Mm. We're fishing for, so let's say skimmers, roach, carp. When you get to a five, six pound bream, I'm saying if your rod's bent it around like this. He's got it on, it, he's on. It's on, isn't it, right? But when you're fishing for smaller fish, effectively you need the spring in the rig. You need the magic twig. Or similar. In the because, rig. Because when you think of the weight behind a smaller fish, and the movement, how fast they can move, they can dip down, pick up your hook bait. There's not enough weight behind the fish to actually pull the hook into itself. Mm. And they can sort of move a lot faster. They can flap very fast. Mm. Wherever in a big fish, just big nod, drives the hook into itself and he's off. Drive against a, the feeder. A little fish, he's flapping like this and he can get rid of the hook. So that's right. For a little fish, when we're fishing for little fish, that's when we talk about using maybe try and power gun rigs or mm. elastic in the mm. el elastic in the rigs or soft equiver tip, just to add a bit of give in the rig mm. longer feeder links, for instance, if we're using a paternoster, just to give ourselves <coughs> some movement in the rig so the fish hasn't got direct weight to bounce the hook out of itself. So I'm saying that we've already been magic twigging. Yeah, because yeah, I get it. I don't use a three ounce quiver tip, Rob, no. when I fish for small skimmers on a still water. No, and it doesn't matter what time of year. It's not like we get to winter and we go no. get the fine quiver tips out, middle of summer. It depends on the size of fish. Absolutely. Fish so what you've got in a quiver tip is something that shows the bite. And effectively, if you think about it, as it bends round, it's always trying to straighten back, isn't it? Mm. So if I pull against the quiver tip, it's naturally pinging back. Yeah. So effectively, the quiver tip is our way of hooking the fish like that. Because obviously carp fishing is completely geared up. It's bigger leads, mm. it's bigger rods, it's bigger fish. Everything is bigger. So they're trying to have that moment that when a fish picks it up, they don't want any slack in the rig. Effectively, the pickup, as the fish sucks in the bait, they need that little, ooh, ooh, little pull down. Well, I've got it. Mm. By creating a link in my feeder and by creating the right bend in my tip, by having my tip set 
not bent round like this, but having my tip like an inch bent round, that perfect tip okay. balance. So do, do you, you see think, what I'm do saying? you think you've, obviously this, when you look at it, I imagine on a carp rig, it doesn't, pro it probably doesn't look out of place because obviously everything's scaled mm. up. Mm. For me, for my match fishing, it looks, it looks bulky. Far too bulky, it yeah. It looks bulky. For, for match fishing, yeah. So are we saying we're already doing that sort of thing with our softer quiver tips and thinking about, you know, like we say, longer feed links, power gum, all that sort of yes. thing. Are we doing a similar sort of thing? For, for, for me, yes, we are. The only difference I would say with this is um, when a fish picks up a bait on a method feeder, right, when a bait, mm. there still has to be that moment when they either hook themselves yeah. or not. Yeah. Right, do they mug you up? We, we saw or an not? underwater where a fish actually lifted up our method feeder, one shake, and he was gone. Yeah. Now, I wonder if this, and maybe some clever clogs out there, maybe us in the future, that'd be wonderful, <laughs> wouldn't it? Could incorporate that into a method feeder. <laughs> Imagine that, and then a fish lifts, mm. lifts up, is, because obviously then this is incorporated in. Would I be incredible. If we could actually create a method feeder around that. Absolutely. That hides the mechanism. Because that's not going to catch any, as far as I'm concerned, by the way, if I'm playing a fish with that, it's the same with, in, with when we go method feeder fishing, the, a lot of fisheries ask for a free running feeder, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. So if, you, if it comes off, you're not trailing no. the method feeder yeah. around. I get that. So if you could incorporate that within the method feeder, but still be free running, Beautiful, yeah. Now, now you are being clever. Weber, yeah, you are being clever. You're being really that clever. Is, you know, someone has really got to get a thinking cap on. To but do we that. have elasticated method feeders. We have right? elasticated So if you had an elasticated method feeder, that effectively when it picked up, oh, mm. you would be creating the same thing, mm. wouldn't you? So I, I also think, you know, when we talk about fish trailing tackle around, none of us want fish trailing tackle around. No. Whether it's a method feeder, whether it's one of these, whether it's a four ounce lead from a carp angler, whether it's anything on the on the line, but also. Just think about the times when you're fishing in line and you're doing everything perfect and you think well all i've got if the fish if i break is a hook that's all the fish is tra tra trailing around what if you break off on your line clip and you've got 50 meters of line out there and he's trailing around a hook but 50 meters of line yeah, also absolutely there's, you know there's a load of situations that could happen so i know trailing anything is bad but also we've just got to think about there's a lot of consequences when we go fishing. We've just got to try our best. That's all we can do. That's absolutely right. That's all, that is all we can do. So I think that I'm going to say that in smaller feeder fishing styles, that's not get, we've already got that mm. with our tips. Yeah, we have, yeah. With method, with carp, maybe even with bream. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, you know, when you go bream fishing, you know, when you are in your peg and you're at Ferry Meadows and you've got a bait, but I'm going to say that the fish picks up your bait two or three times before you actually hook you it. You think so? You've got to meet a hook length on sometimes because you're trying to be clever. I reckon <laughs> he goes like this. He goes, <laughs> and then he goes, and yeah, there's a little wander around. Yeah, but that's what we don't and want he, to think and about. And he turns either. to his mate and he goes, not sure about these maggots, pal, and spits them out. Yeah, yeah. So I almost think in that situation, but yet, I can give you a brilliant example. I went fishing just yesterday, Rob, 60 centimeter hook length was amazing. I caught a fish every single cast. I thought, it's solid. So I chucked out a pellet feeder with my hook bait this far from the hook. Didn't, Didn't tuck it thinking in. Thinking there's that many fish no, there. I just put it around every single chuck. Yeah. Never caught one, not one. Didn't even catch a single fish. Because when I was feeder fishing, the fish was watching down, nice. my bait and going, I want to eat that. So advancements in, in fishing, in my opinion, are welcomed Method feeders, feeders have got better and better and better and better because we are prepared to advance what we're doing. Has this got a place in what we're doing? Maybe one day it will. Yeah, maybe. Maybe one day it will. And it wouldn't have been whether it's like this or like something else. Scaled and I, down version Let me maybe, tell yeah. you now, I can absolutely guarantee as I sit here now, there will be a Magic Twig Mark II without these arms on it without something else, without the controversy, but unless you, as a society, angling society, unless you are open-minded enough to push the developments, I think we're just gonna go backwards. Yeah, wouldn't it be boring if we just cast out that free running rig everywhere or free lined a bit of bait mm. in the margins? Where would we, be, you know, what, what, that's 1970s. Look where we've progressed to now. Look where we've progressed Isn't to. Isn't it exciting when we're going fishing and 
even fishing with our own inventions. <laughs> how, how good is it when you make something yourself and you go and catch a few, few this, fish? This even is if a, it's a rig. This is a carp rig pulled from the lake, Rob. Yeah. The hair rig's got a little swivel on it with a ring. Yeah, it's got It's some... got a piece of rubber. Yeah. There's a swivel attaching to the hook with some sort of shrink tube on. There's a bit of putty here. Mm. Then I've got a stiff link at the bottom. I mean, this is a work of art. I know. I, I, um, I listened to a podcast, you know, a while ago with a really well-known um, carp angler who, one of the old school carp anglers from like the 80s. And he said, as soon as we, as soon as we started looking at rigs as Meccano sets, actually building rigs with components, pre-made components. He says, I knew we were doomed as in old school fishing. Yeah. And I think you've just got to accept that. That's progression. That is progression, absolutely. And one day, I'm sure something similar will be brought to the match fishing table. Will it catch us any more fish? Don't know.